Hey guys, welcome to the video. I feel like I am looking super tired today because for the past two weeks we have had a lot of sickness in our house, which as any of you with babies know is no fun when you have a five, six month old and they like to suck their thumb while they sleep and they're stuffy. It just ends up being no sleep for the parents and the baby as long as they are sick. So the last few weeks, my husband and I have basically been taking turns all night long, getting his nose clean, sitting up with him, helping him get back to sleep so that we can all get a little bit of rest here and there. But I decided not to put off filming this video any longer because I have been really wanting to get it done for you guys and share some of the things that I have learned this time about keeping my house clean while having a young baby at home. So for any of you that are new to my channel, welcome. I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and I make videos and blog all about simplifying mom life. So if you enjoy this video and would like to see more like it, hit the subscribe button down below and be sure to hit the bell next to it so you'll be notified when the next video comes out. So for any of you that are new to the channel, I have a seven year old, a four year old, and now I have a six month old as well. And this postpartum and newborn phase for us has been much more challenging than it was with either of the two girls because he really struggled with eating and I was basically feeding him around the clock in one way or another. I would be attempting to breastfeed him, then I would bottle feed him, and then I would pump. And it felt like I did that 24 seven. In reality, it was more between 7 a.m. and midnight that that cycle pretty much happened constantly. So before I get too far out of this newborn phase, and we are starting to get out of the newborn phase, he finally within the last month has been able to transfer enough food with just breastfeeding and now getting some solids that I don't have to pump anymore. I wanted to make sure I make this video while it is still fresh and share with you guys the tips that I use to keep my house pretty clean while we had a newborn at home. So the first thing that you want to do if you are trying to keep your house clean and have a newborn, and especially if you have a newborn and other kids at home, is you want to adjust your expectations. When I say I kept my house clean, this was a very different type of clean than when I am normally cleaning my house and where my cleaning standards normally are. If you guys have watched my how to easily manage your home videos, you know that I like a very clean and tidy house at all times. And typically my cleaning routine involves actually cleaning one of my bathrooms twice a week because I like to start and end the week with the downstairs bathroom clean. Now, that did not happen during this newborn phase and some weeks bathrooms didn't get clean at all. And that was okay because really we were kind of in survival mode. I needed to make sure that I was eating enough, my kids, my bigger kids were fed, and that the baby was gaining enough weight. So any cleaning that I was able to do was a bonus and it wasn't as important to have a perfectly clean house all the time because I knew that that time wasn't going to last forever. Now the amount of time that you are kind of in that survival newborn phase is going to be different for everyone. With my first two kids, it only lasted for about three months or 12 weeks because we teach our children to sleep through the night fairly early on. And by that point, I was getting sleep at night and I felt like I could pretty much return to life as usual just with the adjustment of having an extra person around. This time though, with doing that triple feeding and also having two other kids, it lasted for much longer. It was about five months so that I felt like I was just walking around in a haze and just completely exhausted. All I could think about was wanting to sleep and that was the one thing that I didn't feel like I could do because I didn't have time. So I definitely needed to change my expectations for what my house was going to look like on a daily basis. The second thing you want to do is you want to keep up with a bare minimum. And in my book, the bare minimum is keeping a clean kitchen, first of all, and that includes cleaning up the kitchen after every meal. Now, did it get done every single meal? Absolutely not. But we made sure to at least end the day with a clean kitchen so that we were starting the day fresh and not constantly feeling like we were getting caught up. I do have other videos showing you how to get your kitchen clean in the most efficient way possible and I will link those in the cards and in the description down below if you would like to check that out. But if you can just commit to keeping your kitchen clean, your house will feel much cleaner even if every single thing isn't getting perfectly done. The second thing on my list of doing the bare minimum is keeping up with the laundry because laundry really can spiral out of control quickly, especially when you are adding a baby to the mix if you aren't staying on top of it. 
So in our house, we do one load of laundry every day of the week, except for Saturday and Sunday is kind of a flex day. Sometimes we do an extra load, sometimes we don't. During the first five months with our baby, we definitely did that extra load on Sunday because you just go through a lot of laundry in that postpartum period. And then in the newborn period with all of the spitting up, etc. So we definitely went through that laundry, but having at least one load done every day allowed us to stay on top of it and not feel like we were just getting overwhelmed by laundry. And if you want to see a full video about how to stay on top of your laundry, I will link that in the description and in the cards as well, because it really isn't hard to do. It is just a matter of getting in the habit of keeping your laundry done. And the third thing that I tried to do every day is tidy up the downstairs and the common areas. Now, this did not happen every single day and you do have to give yourself some grace when you are in this space because you're exhausted, you're super sleep deprived and someone is depending on you basically for life to live. You have to make sure they are fed, you have to make sure they are getting cared for, changed, everything. And you just have to assume that life is not going to go exactly as you have it planned every single day. So with the tidying up, with the amount of toys and things that we have in our house, this was very minimal. As I've mentioned in other videos, we have a decluttered house. We have very minimal toys. We have minimal stuff just laying around. So that makes tidying up at the end of the day very simple. It's just putting the little things that are laying around back where they belong. And the other reason this was fairly minimal for me is because I have done my best and it's not perfect. They don't do this every single day, but we do our best to have our children put away their own things. So the seven-year-old and the four-year-old tend to put away their own things either right after they're done playing with them, which is the goal, or at the end of the day when we ask them to put everything away and tidy up their room. So that takes a lot of the burden off of me and it's just a minimal little walk through, pick up, put things away that I would do every evening. Now the third thing you want to do if you want to have a clean house when you have a newborn is you've gotta ask for help. I know for me, I like being really independent and self-sufficient, but this is one time when I really have to ask other people to help out if I want my house to be clean. And the main person that I usually ask for help is my husband. He is an awesome help, but I do have to ask him. And I know a lot of women get frustrated because they see their husband sitting around and not helping out very much. And I think one thing that we forget is we just have to ask when we need help. Sometimes I would see my husband sitting on the couch and I feel like, hey, the kitchen needs cleaned and I could sit there and get really frustrated about that. Or I could just say, hey, could you clean the kitchen? And generally he would be more than happy to do it. He'd jump up and help out. Or he would say, hey, I'm working on something. I will do it at this time or after I get the kids to bed or something like that. But we were communicating about what needed to be done and I was asking for his help when I needed it. Other people that are great to ask for help are family members. We are super blessed in our situation because my mom is typically able to come and stay for several weeks after I have a baby, and she really takes care of all the cooking and cleaning while she is here. But even if you don't have family that is able to do that, I know most parents, if they live in the same town or even if they can just come for a couple of days, are more than happy to help out, especially if you ask and tell them that you need the help. And I know if you don't have any family that lives nearby, as a friend of people who have had kids, I am always more than happy to help out if they just tell me how I can help. I know some people don't like help cleaning, they feel a little embarrassed with having someone else come and clean their house, but if they ask me to clean, I am more than happy to do it. I know what it's like to have a newborn and I'm happy to help out if I can. Or another way you can get help so that you have a little bit of time to clean is asking someone to bring over a meal and then you can take the time that you would have spent cooking and do a little bit of cleaning. But really, you don't have to be embarrassed if you ask people to clean your house and it's not clean. Anyone who has had kids understands and especially people who offer and say, let me know if you need any help, take them up on that because they actually mean it. At least I think they do. I know I mean it when I tell people that, but very few people actually reach out and say I need help. 
And other good people to ask for help are your kids. I know I mentioned in other videos that I worked really hard with my girls who are seven and four to get very comfortable with their checklists before the baby was born because I wanted to make sure that they were able to contribute without me having to micromanage them. Now, even if you haven't set the foundation of having checklists and things like that, you can still ask your kids if they're old enough to help out in one way or another. I know my seven-year-old is fairly familiar with most of the cleaning that has to be done in the house, and I can ask her to do pretty much anything, and she is able to do it. It probably won't be done exactly to how I would do it, and it will definitely be done a little bit slower, but slower and a little bit less clean is better than not done at all. So don't feel bad about asking your kids either. They help make the mess. They can definitely help clean it up. The next thing to do if you want to have a clean house with an infant is do what you can when you can. So if your baby is taking a long nap and you find yourself with a spare 10 or 20 minutes, look around and see what needs to be done the most. If it has been a couple weeks since you've cleaned a bathroom, maybe tackle that. If it has been a while since you vacuumed, go ahead and run a vacuum over those floors. The nice thing about having an infant is not a lot in those first few weeks and months disturbs their sleep. So you can do things that will be a little bit louder like vacuuming and it shouldn't mess up their nap schedule. If you don't even have 10 or 20 minutes to devote to a single chore, just put things in the proper area of the house. So sometimes during the day, if I find the downstairs is getting a little messy and the baby happens to be sleeping a little longer, I will just take a minute and put things on the stairs. Then when I go upstairs, I can grab the things that need to go upstairs and take them and put them in the proper area. Then I can easily ask the kids, hey, there's a little pile of things here that you need to put away and they can then distribute it and put things away where it needs to go. So just putting things in the right area makes it a lot easier to actually put those things away when you have a spare minute. And it also makes it so when I do have time to run a vacuum over the floors, the floor is already ready. I don't have to then tidy up and then vacuum. I can just do it because I've already been putting things in the proper area throughout the day. And then once you have done those basic things, try not to worry about the rest. I know this is challenging. I very much like to have a clean house. I am a type A personality and a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to my home. But you know that this season is temporary. And as soon as you are feeling back to your normal self and the baby is on a good schedule, you can easily switch gears and get back to your regular routine. Now here's a little bonus tip for you if you feel like your newborn stage is lasting a very long time and you just can't get out of it or you have a feeling it might last a while longer. You can create a simplified version of the routines that I show you in the little series that I did on how to easily manage your home. And I will put a link in the cards and in the description if you want to check that out. In that series, I walk you through the entire process for getting your home running on autopilot so you don't have to think about it so much. But for example, I did not clean my downstairs bathroom twice a week, like I mentioned earlier in this video. And in my cleaning routine, I talk about how I normally do that. So instead, what I did was one day a week, I would clean the downstairs bathroom and another day of the week, I would vacuum the downstairs. Typically both of those things would be on the same day for me, but with all of the extra things that I had going on and the lack of sleep, it just wasn't feasible to get all of that done anymore. So I spread out my routine more evenly through the week and had smaller tasks for myself every day, and that made it a lot easier to get it done. Now, if you happen to be watching this video before you have your baby, there are three things that will make your life a lot easier when your baby comes and will make it much easier to keep your house clean. The first one is setting up good routines and making those habits now so that when the baby comes, it's just a natural habit to keep your kitchen clean, to keep your laundry going, and to keep everything tidy. The second thing you can do is set up a good meal plan. And I will link all my meal planning videos down below, but especially pay attention to the meal planning video I did recently about adjusting my meal plan for having a baby in the house. And that is a much simplified version of the meal planning process that will work very well when you have a new baby at home. And the third thing to do before your baby arrives, if you have time, is to declutter. Any amount of decluttering will make your home much easier to manage and much easier to clean. So if you can do that ahead of time, 
definitely take the time to do that. Even if you can only get in one 15 minute decluttering session before the baby is born, it will still help. Every bag or box of things that you take out of your house and donate will make it easier to maintain a clean space and will make you feel much less overwhelmed when the baby is here and there are so many things that are just out of your control. So I hope this video helped you out. If you have a new baby or if you are expecting a new baby, let me know in the comments down below which of the tips that I shared in this video was most helpful for you because I love hearing from you guys in the comments. As always, I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and I make videos all about simplifying mom life. So feel free to join the community and subscribe down below because I would love to see you on the next video.